Hello pianists, today we will sight read another beginning musical piece from the Romantic era. It's a waltz, opus 87, number 39, that's in the key of G major. So let's first hear it and then I'll talk you through the steps to learn it. Enjoy. So if we turn our attention to our musical pyramid, we're going to look at the rhythm first. Always address your signatures at the beginning of your music. So the time signature are the two numbers of 3-4. Being a waltz, not surprisingly, it's in 3-4, meaning there's three quarter notes in each measure. I look for my fastest note values, which is still just quarter notes in this piece, like the bar talk we sight read before. So I won't need to count with eighth note subdivision of 1 and 2 and 3, and I can just count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Look for repetitive rhythmic patterns, many groups of three quarter notes, and there's combinations of half note, quarter note, and on the second half, like measure 10, I see quarter note, half note. So we're not going to tap through this whole piece in our video, but you can certainly do that on your own. I'm just going to clap through the first line just to get a feeling of my rhythmic patterns and count along. Tap your foot if you need to, use a metronome. Let's go through it. One, ready, here it is. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So you can pause it there if you need some more practice with that level, practice going through that at your own pace as well. Let's go to our note reading, let's jump in. So we're gonna go back to where it's originally written before we get into our octave displacements. Use your landmark notes. In the bass clef, my closest landmark note is that bass C, it is a second below, spaced a line, so it's written on a B3. Notice it says left hand two octaves higher than written. So I'm gonna bring it up, here's B4, B5. So this will be the starting position for my left hand. It's written in treble and bass clef because that's the standard way you see music written. Easier than treble and treble clef to start. Let's look at the right hand note. I'm gonna move my left hand for a moment. I look for my closest landmark note. Looks like that would be that treble C down a second is this B. And it says to go up an octave higher. So both my hands are there. I'm sitting in a G five finger scale. So hopefully that's connecting to those five finger scales you've learned before. Let's also look at our key signature. I see one sharp to start the piece. There are many websites that explain key signatures, but I'll just explain in short. If you see sharps, you look for the last sharp, which in our case is the only one you see. You play that note, that is actually that landmark F and F. We go up one half step to find the key name. This is in the key of G major, so that last sharp actually serves as the leading tone, the seventh note of the scale. Go up one half step and you find the tonic of G, which is what our five finger scale showed us. So let's warm up on our G five finger scale. So much of piano learning and musical learning is retrieving patterns that you've already practiced, your scales and chords and your arpeggios within your warm up time. And I look for the span of my music, my highest notes looks like it's a D, lowest note is G, a G. So I know I won't have to move my hand. Always look for accidentals, added sharps or flats. Measure 13, beat three looks like a, that's a landmark C. Sharp means go up a half step. Find those C sharps. The very last measure is just a courtesy natural. Bar lines actually cancel those sharps or flats, so they didn't even need to put that, but just to be careful as the pianist, they'll give you a natural to cancel your sharp. All right, once we've got our note patterns and landmark notes figured out, I notice that I have more intervals than just seconds in this piece. So we're gonna go through slowly. Look ahead, and we're gonna name the intervals as we play. So let's try this out, we're gonna start our Bs. One, ready, play, down a second, line to line is a fifth, down a second, up a skip a third B, down a fourth, up a fourth, down a third, down a third to G's. Second, second, third, hold down a second, hold down seconds, one, two, let's do a major nine up to D's. Second, second, third, up a second, third, fifth, fourth, 
to repeat the A's, C sharps, fourth down, seconds, down to that C natural. Okay, let me just recap some other skills we've talked about before. Whenever you have black notes, go in towards the fall board. So no reaching for those notes. So measure 13, just gonna walk it in with that finger securely on the black notes. Also at this note reading stage of your pyramid, I identify spots that are hard to play. I think measures 11 to 12 are difficult with the third, fifth, fourth. So I would go back and target those measures. Play them several times so they become comfortable for you. So you can pause it and go back and practice some of those other spots. All right, now that we have our rhythm and note reading levels of our pyramid pretty secure, we're gonna go on into articulations. This one provides some more interest than even the bar talk. I see I have long slurs. Slurs group music into phrases. Remember when a slur ends, there's a slight breath. So you can draw on your commas if you need to remind yourself to lift. And now I have one staccato at measure 10. It only occurs once. You might need to circle it so you don't forget it. Like we did last time, we're gonna combine our articulations and dynamics. So dynamics, I have more written than the bar talk. Starts soft, it's crescendos and decrescendos, medium loud and loud at the very end. I'm gonna decrescendo. I also will add some inflections and phrase shaping as the notes rise higher. I'm gonna crescendo as they go lower, unless the score indicates differently, I will decrescendo. All right, let's try it through. We're gonna use good technique of our wrist circles, slurs, one staccato, and dynamics. One, ready, go. Soft, crescendo, higher note, decrescendo, crescendo, lift, Decrescendo, crescendo, bring it back down. One, two, three, one, two major, nine. Short, two, three, crescendo, two, three, sneak in. Decrease, back to the beginning. slow down. One last explanation. I have a DC alfine listed at the end. Remember our words come from the Italian. DC means de capo. In Italian, de capo means the head. The head is the beginning of something. So when you see that, it means go back to the head, the beginning of the piece. Fine means the end. So you would go down to the very end, measure 16, go back to the beginning, measure 1, and then finish at measure 8. So you play your first 8 measures twice through. It's up to you if you want to do that repeat sign or not. The last stage, which you've hopefully been hearing come in more to our music, is the style and mood. We can get that indication from our tempo. It's a waltz, which is a dance. We know our pulse is typically on beat one, one, two, three. That might give it more of a lilt than I played with. Also says tranquilo, which means tranquil, calm, and peaceful. So let's try it through one last time. Play it with me if you can and make it feel like that dance, a slight little emphasis on one. One, two, three, one, ready, play. For a long time but actually going through those stages with you helped me play it even better at the very end so use this musical pyramid apply it to your other pieces and have fun learning your music